Let's start tonight, however, in Nigeria, where a joint investigation by UK journalists and a non-profit organization has unearthed a major scandal involving the sale of the country's largest oil block license. The block in question is called OPL245. It's located right on the southern edge of the Niger Delta. It holds an estimated 10 billion barrels of crude oil. Do the math. Current price is about 50 or so dollars a barrel. Now, its license was awarded in 1998 to Malabo Oil and Gas. Later on, however, that same license was sold on to Shell and its venture partner, the Italian oil firm Eni, for $1.3 billion. Journalists from The Observer and Finance Uncovered have now disclosed that previous government officials benefited from the sale of that license. The spoils were wired through Forex Bureau and two payments of $400 million were done through J.P. Morgan in London. Now, Nigeria's anti-graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, has filed fresh corruption charges against Shell and Eni for their roles in the scandal. The bloc is currently owned by the Nigerian government after a temporary court order approved the EFCC's application uh, to seize it. Shell and Eni, however, have appealed against that order. They want the field to be returned back to them. We'll know if that will happen on the 13th of March. For now, though, let's get the latest details on this particular scandal. Deji Badmus joins us now live in Lagos with more data on this story. Um, Deji, there's, there's a lot of history here that we really haven't covered in that introduction around OPL 245. This specific case focuses on the 2011 purchase by those two European oil companies, but the murky details go well beyond that, don't they? You're absolutely correct, Rama. It dates back to 1998, to be precise, when Nigeria was led by the late General Sani Abacha, the military uh, president at the time. And uh, uh, basically what happened back then was that the man who served as his petroleum minister, Dan Etete, actually awarded that license to a company known as Malabo. It was later discovered that uh, Etete at the time actually uh, held majority stake in that company. So uh, you could say he awarded the license to himself. I'm talking about the oil license now for um, OPL 245. Uh, anyway, to cut a long story short, another government came into power in 1999. And of course, um, that government took away uh, the license from OPL and gave it to Shell. Eventually, um, the, the, the license, I mean, the license eventually came back to Malabo, uh, this time under President uh, Goodluck Jonathan. And, uh, of course, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan's government now, you know, brought the parties together and uh, tried to settle the case out of court. And uh, Shell and ENI were eventually asked to pay uh, this company $1.1 billion. It's that money that was paid to the company. Of course, not paid directly to the company now because Dan Etete himself, I'm talking about the minister under uh, President Abacha, uh, was later convicted for money laundering in 2007 in France. So the money didn't directly go to Malabo. That's it. it didn't directly go to uh, Dan Etete, but actually went to an, to an account now owned by the federal government at the time. Then the federal government later uh, transferred the money to uh, Dan Etete and uh, Malabo. And from there, the money was shared. So that's exactly what this case is about. That's what uh, the EFCC has decided to reopen. And, of course, that's actually the case uh, at that court in France where, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, investigation is still going on. It's, um, it's a very bad case, to be candid, Rama. Indeed. And we should point out to our viewers that there are actually three different jurisdictions handling things related to OPL 245, Italy, Nigeria, and, of course, France, as you mentioned. Um, let's talk about these two companies, though. Have they responded formally to the latest set of charges from the EFCC? Not exactly. They've not responded. Uh, all the while, I mean, Shell and ENI have maintained that, uh, well, that they never knew they were dealing with a convicted criminal and that in, in the first place that the money was not paid to Malabo directly, that it was actually paid to the federal government of Nigeria. Uh, in terms of the latest case, EFCC has, I mean, uh, latest case now where with the EFCC, Shell and ENI have not responded. They've not said anything. What we do know is that they've filed a case uh, against the EFCC in court. As you know, they're asking a judge who has ordered uh, a temporary for feature now of that asset to the federal government. They're asking the judge to revoke that order and that, um, uh, you know, that the oil world should revert back to them. Of course, as you've mentioned, uh, that case will be coming up on the 13th uh, of uh, March. And um, we just have to wait and see what happens. But, of course, um, 
if the case goes against uh, Shell and ENI, it does not mean Shell and ENI will cease operating in Nigeria uh, because that's not the, oil, the only oil well they have in their control. I mean, they, uh -huh. they actually own a number of oil wells in this country. The only difference is that OPL245 actually holds uh, a massive oil deposit, as you've been reporting, something close to 10 uh, billion barrels of oil, Rama. Indeed, and you just segued neatly into my next question. I mean, these firms, as you just mentioned, they've applied to have that seizure lifted. But let's assume, for the sake of argument, that they, they do lose that appeal. How will this affect their operations in Nigeria, specifically with regard to how much oil they're putting into the market? Well, I, I'm not sure it will affect the operation because what we know is that uh, I'm, I'm not so sure that um, actually Shell and ENI have started pumping oil from that um, from that oil well because I mean this whole thing has been immersed in controversy. Uh, they have actually spent so much in try in, in terms of trying to develop the oil well, but in terms of pumping oil now out of that oil well, I'm not too sure. Uh, we just have to find out. Uh, but I, I do not think it will affect the operation. Shell has got a huge investment in this country. It's operating offshore. And um, even if that oil well eventually, if the court maintains that the oil well will remain with the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, there's, there's, there's nothing saying that Shell could not go back to the federal government again to try to buy off that license. But we just have to wait and see. But... Um, uh, of course, I, I don't think it will affect its operation significantly, even though uh, Shell and ENI have committed enormous, um, uh, enormous amount of money now to develop that oil well. Indeed, we lived it there for the time being. Thank you for that. That's Deji Badu, of course, live in Lagos with the uh, fascinating story of many twists and turns around OPL 245.